All right, so we want to consider another type of stochastic model known as the random walk process, which falls under the classification of discrete state space with discrete time process, okay? So the outline for this session will include a brief introduction to random walk process. Secondly, we'll be looking at a simple random walk process with some short examples. And finally, we'll take a look at the restricted random walk process, okay? So let's begin with a brief introduction to random work process. So a random work model appears in the context of many real world problems, such as the gambling problem, the motion of the particle, the price changes in stock prices, and the dynamic change in network traffic. So by definition, a random work is a discrete time stochastic process that describes a path that consists of a succession of random steps on some probability space. In other words, we can say that a random walk can be defined as a series of discrete steps an object takes in some direction, okay? So generally, in a random walk, the position of a walker after having moved n times is known as the state of the walk after n steps or after covering n stages, okay? So now to the second session on simple random walk process. A simple random walk on a line or in one dimension occurs when a step forward given by plus one has probability P and a step back given by minus one has probability Q, which is equal to minus P. So at the i step, the modified Bernoulli random variable given by S in this I is observed, which is given by the expression in equation one. So equation one is showing us that every step is associated with a Bernoulli random variable such that a step forward has probability P and a step back has probability Q, which is equal to one minus P, okay? And the position of the work at the nth step is the random variable given by the expression in equation two. So to find the position of the work at the nth step, we can use the expression in equation two, which will always depend on the position of the work at the initial step, okay? Given by X and the zero. So we can rewrite this in this form, okay? Now, if we set N to one, it means that we want to find the position of the work at the first step. So we have one minus one here, which will be X index zero or X naught. And this side will give us S one, X, S index one, okay? So this means that the position of the work at the first step would depend on the position of the work at the initial step, right? And this one will show us the position whether you are going to move forward or you are going to move back or to the left, all right? So this one will give us the position whether we are moving forward or to the right or we are moving back or to the left from our initial position to the next position, okay? All right. So now this is a diagram showing us a simple random walk process. So we can see that in every state, a step forward has probability P and a step back has probability Q, okay? So take note that from equation one, if we set P to half or 0 0.5, then the process becomes a simple symmetric random walk process, okay? So from equation one, if we set P to half, Q will also become half, okay? So therefore we have a simple symmetric random walk process. So this is a diagram showing us a simple symmetric random work process. So we can see that in every state, right, a step forward or a step back has probability half, which is equal to 0 0.5. And this basically means that the value of the process increases or decreases randomly by one unit with equal probability, okay? All right, so now probability of a random walk process. So this means that we want to find the probability of the walk in a particular state or position after n steps, okay? So let the position after the n steps be given by this expression. So basically to find the position of the walk, which is given by k after n steps, we just have to subtract the number of steps taken to the left from the number of steps taken to the right, okay? So n index one is the number of steps taken to the right. 
um, n index 2 is the number of steps taking to the left. Okay, so once we subtract this from that, we can find the position of the work, which is given by k after n steps. Okay, all right, so we know that since the number of steps taken to the right and the number of steps taken to the left is equal to the total number of steps, we can find that from equation three, we can obtain it from this um, expression. And we can also obtain equation four from this expression, okay? So if we are to add these two equations, we're going to obtain this result. If we make n one the subject, we obtain this, okay? So from equation four, we can make n to the subject. So we can replace n one with this expression, which will give us this. And once you solve it, you also obtain this result. So um, this is basically shown as um, the probability of the work in a particular state after n steps, okay, which is uh, given by this expression, which looks like a random linear distribution, okay. So this will be valid, or it will hold this will hold, or it will be valid if the number of steps is greater than or equal to the um, position of states, and also with n plus k should be even. Okay, so one of these conditions will then we can make use of this. So if n plus k is odd, then it means that the probability that we find ourselves in a particular state of or position after n steps will be zero. Right. Okay, so now let's take a look at some properties of simple random work process. So the first property is independent increment, which states that for a set of disjoint intervals, the increment are independent, okay? I already know what independent increment means from our previous tutorial. In case you have skipped that video, you can check it out by clicking on the link in the card above or check the description of this video for that link, okay? The second property is the Markov property. And we also know this from our previous tutorial. You can also check it out by clicking on the link in the card above or check the description of this video for the link, okay? So the Markov property is saying that the conditional distribution that um, the work is in state K after N plus N steps, given that we are in the current state um, K index M at um, step M and given some past states, the process is independent of this past state that will depend only on the current state K and that's basically what we have here. Then the last property has got to do with the mean variance. So we can obtain the mean of the random work using this expression. And we can also obtain the variance of the random work process using this expression, okay? All right, so let's take an example. Given a simple symmetric random work, that is y index n, which is given by this expression, where z index i is a Bernoulli, where a step forward has probability p and a step back has probability k, which is equal to half, okay? So we want to find what is the probability that we are in state one after three steps. And secondly, give, we want to give a distribution of the process after three steps if it is known that we are in state zero at the initial step, okay? So let's take a look at the solution. So for the process in state one after three steps, we have n to the three and k to the one, okay? Now this follows that since n plus k is even, it follows that we can actually find the probability. So n plus k divided by two will give us two, and n minus k divided by two also give us one, okay? So um, we want to find the probability that will be in a particular state right after n steps, which is given by this expression. So we know this, we have it to be two, and we have this to be what we have, okay? So the probability that we are in state one after three steps can be obtained using this. Okay, we just have to input the values. We have n to the three. This side, we have two, so we have two. Okay, so the probability is half, which is the same as 0 0.5. So yeah, we have this to two, that's basically what we have here. And we have this side, which is um, 1 minus P or Q to be 0 0.5, and it is raised to the power 1, okay? So once you use a calculator to compute this, you obtain this result, okay? All right, so now to the next question, we wanted to find out the distribution of the process of that three steps, okay? 
And here we are our end to the three. And we have the state because we are going to start at the as the initial position. We have to include that so we can look at it at the initial position. Okay. So we can have um, zero and we can have um, state one. So state one, we can look at it to the right, then we can also look at it to the left. Okay, so the plus is to the right and the minus is to the left. And um, for state two, we can also look at it to the right and to the left. And state three is same. We can also look at it to the right and to the left. Remember that n should be greater than or equal to k. So it's going to be more than k. So if k is zero, it means that n plus k will be odd. So the probability will be zero, All right? Now, if k is one, n plus k is even. So the probability that we find ourselves in state one to the right after three steps will be this result, which is equal to three out of eight. Now, if k is minus one, it means that n plus k is even. So the probability that we find ourselves in state one to the left after three steps will also give us this result, which is equal to three out of eight, okay? Now, if k is two, n plus k will be odd. So the probability that we find ourselves in state two after three steps, because this is odd, the probability will be zero. Now, if k is equal to minus two, n plus k is odd. So the probability that we find ourselves in this state to the left will be zero. Now, if k is three, n plus k is even, so the probability that we find ourselves in state three to the right after three steps will be one out of eight. Now, if k is minus three, n plus k is what? Even, so the probability that we find ourselves in state three to the left after three steps will also be one out of eight. So therefore the distribution of the process after three steps is given by this, okay? So this is going to be the result of interest. All right, so now to the last session on restricted random work process. So the restricted random work is a simple random work with boundary conditions, okay? So intuitively, you can say that the simple random work is a type of unrestricted random work process, okay? Now, if the work is bounded, then the ends of the work are known as barriers, okay? A useful diagrammatic way of representing restricted random works is by a transition or a process diagram as shown in figure three. So this is a transition diagram for a restricted random work with absorbing barriers at each end of the work. So we have absorbing barriers here, um, which basically implies that the work must end once a barrier is reached, since there's no escape, okay? So let's take a look at the types of restricted random work process. So the first one is absorbing barrier. So an absorbing barrier is a value B, such that the probability that we find ourselves in state B after N plus S steps, given that we are in state B after N steps, will be equal to one, okay? This implies that once state B is reached, the random work stops and remains in this state thereafter, okay? So the second type of restricted random work is known as the reflecting barrier. A reflecting barrier is a value C such that the probability that we find ourselves in a future state C plus one after N plus one steps, given that we are in state C after N steps will also be equal to one which implies that once state C is reached, the random work is pushed away, okay? So the last type is known as the mixed barrier. So the mixed barrier is actually a combination of the absorbing barrier and the reflecting barrier, okay? Which implies that once state D is reached, the random work remains in this state with probability of alpha, or it moves to the neighboring state D plus one with probability one minus alpha, okay? So um, this will bring us to the end for this session. Please, if you find value in today's tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.